So let us look at various aspects of the communication skills. The topics that we will discuss uh, will be uh, modes and dimensions of communication, oral communication, written communication, and at the end some prescriptions for developing communication skills. So the aspects of communication that are of importance are communication style. So it can be formal, it can be informal, it can be casual. Many times students have difficulty distinguishing between informal and casual. Actually uh, during presentation, for example oral presentation, okay, uh, presentation in conferences, it is a formal presentation. Whereas uh, talking to people in the class, right, when a teacher is talking to students in the class, but not discussing about the topic, then it is an informal discussion. So one can be informal rather than being formal, but one should try to avoid being casual, right. So casual people have difficulty distinguishing between casual and informal. So how do you distinguish between casual and informal? Can someone help here? What is the difference between casual and informal? For example, a formal dress would be a coat and shoes and so on, right? A casual dress will be t-shirt. A t-shirt is not necessarily informal. Right? It is a casual wear. It is not called an informal wear. So informal is between formal and casual. Okay? As you have rightly said, it has to do with the extent of um, seriousness and accuracy. For example, uh, if you are talking to someone with your feet on the wall, right, one foot on the wall, now is it informal or is it casual? Right? It is casual. So if one needs to be informal, then one must remember it should not degrade to casual. Depends. If you are talking among friends, for example, it is fine. But particularly when you are talking to people of different levels. That is the next point. The mode of communication, vertical and horizontal. There are two modes. Vertical communication means it is between people of different status. Teacher and a student. Right, these are different status. Horizontal on the other hand is between people of the same status, say between colleagues or between friends and so on. Dimensions of communication, understanding and agreement, effectiveness and efficiency, they are the four dimensions of communication. Understanding and agreement. Many times it is seen that there is disagreement between people because they have not correctly understood what is being communicated. Mistake may be that of the person who is listening or it may be that of the person who is talking, right? Who is the originator of the communication. Now just as you can have disagreement because of misunderstanding, you can have uh, agreement because of misunderstanding also. That is also not good. That if two people agree, but they are not understood each other, that is also not a good situation. So good situation is one where understanding is there. There can be agreement or disagreement. That is not really bad, right? But there should be correct understanding and proper understanding. So it is the, our duty to communicate in a way in which it is understood properly by the other person. Now that is where we come to the other two dimensions, effectiveness and efficiency. So what is meaning of effectiveness? Communication is said to be effective if the other person understands correctly and exactly what you want to say, right? What is efficiency? What is the amount of effort that is being spent in order to be effective? So in order to make people understand what you want to say, how much effort are you spending? How many words do you use, right? That is efficiency. That is where efficiency comes in. So you must be able to do things with minimum effort. Then it is efficient communication. Let us focus a little bit more on effectiveness and efficiency. So let us look at ineffective communication, an example of ineffective communication. 
uh, one of the students, uh, I finished his MS. This is a practical, uh, I'm taking practical cases. Finished uh, his MS and then uh, joined a job. And then after a few months, he sent an email. This was the email. Sir, my employer wants a letter about the completion of my thesis written by you. <laughs> now it is not clear whether the thesis was written by you, which is in all likelihood what might have happened if this is the way the student is writing and the thesis was commended by the reviewers. Or whether the letter is to be written by you about the thesis. Okay? So this is an example of ineffective communication. It is not able to communicate what the person wants to say. Now, as against this, let us consider another interesting example of an effective communication. Okay. Now, this was a letter written by uh, the person Ukhil Chandra Sen to Sahib Ganj Divisional Railway Office in 1909. It is this letter that is supposed to be responsible for introduction of toilets in the train. Until then, there were no toilets in the train. So, this is a person who described this problem. Okay. Now, uh, the important point about this is, it has been effective in the sense it has achieved the result. Okay? Grammatically, if you see and the words, the way the words have been used, right, it looks such a bad English. So, what is crucial here to see is that grammar is not necessarily the essential element of effective communication. It is important that you be grammatically correct. But grammatically correct or use of the uh, uh, words which are used in English does not necessarily ensure that you will be effective. For example, the previous communication if you see, grammatically I do not find anything wrong. It is arrangement of the words that is responsible for ineffectiveness here. On the other hand, here in this case, the description is very vivid of what is the problem the person has faced. <laughs> right? So, the moment uh, you write a letter like that, I mean, what would have happened to the person is very uh, clear. Right? And then you feel that some action should be taken about it. So, the point I am trying to uh, uh, make here is that effectiveness is not limited to grammatically correct writing. It is much more than that. How you describe, how you are able to effectively describe the situation or your own idea. Now, let us look at efficient and inefficient communication. How inefficient communication can be made efficient? That is also shown here. Now, many times we use, uh, we are verbose. We use uh, too many words to describe something which can be described using one or two words. Here are some examples. A considerable amount of. Instead of saying a considerable amount of, you just say much. A considerable amount of work has been done. You can only say, you can just say much work has been done. The given data. This is, it is unnecessary to add the word given. The words given, right? just say data. Instead of saving, uh, instead of saying in the event that, you just say if. In the event that this happens, that will happen. You just say if this happens, that will happen. Deposited precipitate. Now, any precipitate is always deposited. There is no need to say deposited precipitate. The nature of Hoyle's work is always of a provocative kind. Which is same as saying Hoyle's work is always provocative. Okay? So, this is where uh, the efficiency comes in. If you carefully uh, observe uh, how much, how many words you use to describe a situation. Uh, in fact, uh, research on thesis writing and paper writing has shown that if a person or a student has written a paper or a thesis for the first time, the first draft that a student or the scholar writes, an experienced writer can reduce the size of this to one third of the original length. Right? That much inefficiency is there in communication of a novice, one who is not experienced in writing. In fact, uh, one of the places I did this course, uh, there was a person who attended the course out of interest who had done PhD several years ago and is now teaching. Now, after uh, the discussion on this communication skills and this kind of uh, hints where we tend to be inefficient in communication, he went back and actually saw some of the papers that he had written. And next day he came and told me that, uh, sir, what you say is true, though not to one third, I could reduce my paper by 40 percent. 
whatever I had written during my PhD days, the same papers, if I were to write today, the length of those papers would be 40 percent less. So, you can imagine how much inefficiency is there in communication. Okay? Because the point is, if you take uh, too many words to describe your um, idea, people will lose interest because they cannot sustain their interest for a long time. So, that is where you are losing out. Depends on uh, the type of research undertaken. Suppose if it is case study kind of research, so then it, is it not uh, better to use uh, you know, better words to explain the situation? Uh, can you uh, please elaborate? Uh, what Suppose, do you mean by saying better words? Yeah, uh, like you know, uh, uh, instead of saying just if, then that if is supported by you know the associated words in two three words you know that way. Yeah, in the event that yeah, for in example. The event that way. No, so. not at all. In fact, you should not. You should avoid. In fact, the examples that we have given are some common uh, mistakes committed by people. Like that, there is a long list actually. No, in empirical research, okay, normally it is accepted. In in case study kind of research, right, and mostly uh, the language found appears to be uh, that way. Yes, no, there uh, maybe what you mean is, if you are telegraphic, if you are telegraphic, then you may not be uh, clear to other people. So here we are not talking of being telegraphic, right? That is the other extreme. Here we are trying to uh, suggest how you can um, be efficient. There is a difference between efficiency and being telegraphic, right? Uh, maybe what you mean is that uh, it is better not to be telegraphic and use a few more words so that people understand things clearly. If you mean that, then you are right. Yes, but please understand that replacing in the event that with if is not being telegraphic. It is being efficient. Writing the Hoyle's work is always provocative. Instead of writing the nature of Hoyle's work is always of a provocative kind, is being efficient. It is not being telegraphic. You do not convey anything more, nor do you make the statement more interesting by using the left hand side of these arrows that are shown here. So, uh, point is you may uh, try to describe a situation by different means. Let us uh, make this point very clear. In order to be clear, you may use different explanations. Right? That is possible. If that way you are increasing the length, in order to be clear, that is all right. But within the sentence, you need not use words which can be avoided. Right? So, you explain a point from different perspectives. That way you can increase the length. Okay? That will add clarity, but not uh, just using uh, more words where things can be said using one word. So, uh, how the communication skill is very important and it takes an effort to develop it can be uh, seen by this particular statement of Pascal, who was one of the great scientists. Right? So, while writing a particular letter, this is what he has said in the beginning. I am writing a long letter since I do not have the time to write a shorter one. So, if you want to make things uh, compact, it takes time, it takes effort. Okay? That is why we have said the first draft of students, it is going to be long because only by effort you can make it crisp. In the context of uh, reporting uh, results, uh, if I may uh, give an example, you know nowadays you have for many journals. Um, a letter section and a full length paper section, right? So, you applied general of applied physics, it will have applied physics letters, right, as a, an adjunct journal where you can report uh, things in a compact form and which are useful for rapid publication. It is in general more difficult to write a letter than to write a full paper because you have to compress everything in a short space without being unclear, without being telegraphic. Okay? So, that is where if you um, have the habit of writing letters and if you have written several letters, definitely your communication skills will be good. It is not very easy to write uh, short papers. It is also not very easy to give short talks okay, effectively. It is important to note always that communication is for others. Communication is for others. Improvement in communication improves quality of learning process and interpersonal relations. It is found that 
the way you communicate also affects the interpersonal relation between people right so if you are not able to get the right words to explain your idea you cannot get other people interested in you right so that is how it affects the relations now we will discuss a few points about oral communication and then we will have the activity of presentation by one of the students how to be effective in oral communication this is a slide which is very very important the data presented here is based on research on oral communication <clears throat> what is it that makes oral communication effective okay we have already seen earlier with an example that grammatical correctness doesn't necessarily imply effectiveness and in spite of being grammatically wrong you can be effective okay so what is it that uh, uh, makes a communication effective oral communication effective so research has shown that 55% of the impact that an oral communication makes is because of non verbal factors this is very very interesting so what are the non verbal factors gesture and facial expression these two factors <coughs> are supposed to make 55% impact in communication oral communication right something very significant i mean if all of us want to improve our oral communication skills then is something we should note because it tells you where you should uh, put in effort to improve your communication skills if i think that if i improve my language then i will be more effective right if i improve my vocabulary i will be more effective yes but not beyond a certain point so according to this uh, particular research only 7% impact is made by the words only 7% impact in communication oral communication we are talking about oral communication here is made by words so after 55% impact because of non verbal factors such as gesture and facial expression the next what is important is vocal factors and uh, this 38% uh, includes spoken word uh, sorry not spoken words a uh, pauses stress intonation these are the three factors which are which constitute a 38% of the impact so where do you pause when you speak your sentences do you pause at all or you don't pause this is very very important stress do you utter all words with equal stress or do you choose some words for giving more emphasis intonation the quality of voice and so on it is not just the loudness the quality of voice it is like you know in singing many people can sing but not all of them have the same quality of voice some voices they sound very uh, nice some don't sound as nice so quality of voice this is also a very important factor in oral communication now a factor to note is the attention span of the audience is initial 20 minutes of concentration lapse for next 10 to 20 minutes slight recovery and then renewed lapse till the end this is what research has shown now <clears throat> we conduct classes for 1 hour and now we are doing 4 hour classes right so how do you uh, manage to hold the attention of the audience this is a very important issue in oral communication so unless you use some special methods and you are a good communicator you cannot hold the attention of the audience so this is put here to emphasize the importance of developing communication skills and this is also the reason why you will find all conferences they ask you to present for 20 minutes that 20 minute period has come from this research that when you discuss a large number of ideas right you should not uh do so for more than 20 minutes because more than 20 minutes a person cannot concentrate on an idea if you switch over to a new idea since the other idea is new one may again start concentrating right but again after 20 minutes beyond 20 minutes it will again the interest is likely to wane so the attention span can be increased by adding variety to the talk so this is the most important thing you should add variety so how do you uh, add variety interaction 
so that is why the people say that you should make the classes interactive okay you should invite comments from the people right ask questions let them ask questions and so on so from this point of view it is not a good idea to uh, tell the uh, audience that look you listen to me for one hour and only at the end of one hour you ask me questions right it may be all right uh, you know if there is a um, formal talk where a chief guest is speaking and at some occasion that is a different uh, situation right where he will speak for one hour you can't possibly interject and ask him questions there but otherwise in a teaching learning process or research kind of environment it is good to have interactions use diagrams if your presentation slides have only text it is going to be less interesting than if you introduce diagrams so you should think whether whatever you have written in text can be put in the form of diagrams the other extreme of having only diagrams is infinitely much more acceptable than having only text in slides then use audio visuals then vary the pace of speech that means uh, some sentences can be uttered fast and then some sentences can be uttered slowly change the pitch of the voice length of sentences they also suggest that you use long sentences followed by short sentences right this kind of variation in the length of sentences pauses repetition gesturing with hands and humor and humor is very very important somehow if you can add humor make people laugh that is also something that can increase the attention span so admittedly these are uh, fairly challenging task because you must do all this at the same time right you should remember to modulate the pitch of the voice change the length of the sentences pause and then add humor and all this therefore it is a very uh, challenging exercise how to develop our oral communication so one must spend sufficient time on this so evidently the way to learn it is you focus on one or two aspects first and you get a grip of that then you go on adding other things because simultaneously if you try to achieve all you know it will be confusion right so uh, the way to develop these kind of skills where many things have to be done at the same time is to first do one at a time and then you try to integrate so let us look at uh, since we want to develop the skill the importance of each of the aspects of communication what is the importance of the pause pause gives prominence to a word by isolation so if you pause then utter a word then again pause the word which you have uttered in between two pauses acquires emphasis it raises suspense the negative aspect is sometimes pauses uh, can be caused by nervousness or memory lapse so pauses should be intentional that is what is meant here right stress what is the role of stress within sentences each word is not of equal earth shattering importance so nouns and verbs receive more stress than adjectives and adverbs another important thing in stress is the accent the accent is the stress given to syllables within a word so when you say that you know someone is speaking english with a marathi accent someone is speaking english with bengali accent someone is speaking english with malayali accent this accent matters a lot in communication i will give you an example to illustrate this point <clears throat> i was uh, doing this course in one of the uh, nits and the uh, um, participants were uh, teachers who have taught for 5 to 10 years the one of the teachers uh, after i uh, spoke about this communication skills and various aspects he came to me after the talk and said sir uh, all this theory is all right but you know it doesn't work in practice i have tried my best for last 5 years i have put in lot of effort to improve my uh, communication and i think i have done it but the students always give me a poor feedback in teachers evaluation right they don't understand the amount of effort i am putting in to uh, you know make the subject clear and so on now uh, when i spoke to him for few minutes i could understand where is the problem 
okay but it is a personal thing right so um, you have to tell a person exactly where he has a problem now it is best done at a young age when people are not very sensitive okay at a very late age it becomes difficult partly because it may be difficult to change also the main problem with this person was he had a very heavy bengali accent so it was very difficult to understand his words that is why the people had difficulty you know understanding him the problem was with the accent now all of us have uh, you know the impact of our mother tongue on the english that we speak this is natural and sometimes it can be it can add variety also okay so because you have different uh, you know ways with in which people speak english but the accent should not be uh, to such an extent that other people do not understand what you are speaking the intonation variation of pitch conveying subtleties of meaning should be connected with the thoughts and attitudes of speaker so you should vary the pitch but the variation of the speech pitch should be such that it should convey what you want to say effectively right it is not just being sing song so um, it is a skill few more aspects of non verbal behavior now what we have seen is um, the uh, verbal aspects involving pause uh, stress and intonation which constitute 38% now we said 55% is non verbal so some of the things of importance there are how close you are to the speaker uh, to the audience proximity now if uh, in a classroom for example if the teacher is far away from the student the impact is noticeably less so if it is a small class definitely you must insist that all students come and sit in the first bench this is very very important you let the audience be as close to you as possible orientation this is very important what is the relative position of the speaker and the uh, audience so many times what happens is the location of the speaker is affected by the location of the computer which has which stores the powerpoint slides because nowadays in conferences and so on powerpoint slides you know use of slides is by default the method now supposing in the room it is so arranged that the computer is at one corner so the speaker is forced to move to the corner now corner is a bad place right because you cannot make eye contact with the audience if you don't make eye contact then you cannot make uh, impact on people so proper eye contact it is very important for you to be in a position from where people are as close to you as possible all of them okay so this is the orientation also orientation now for example if uh, your slides are projected on the screen right now you have to look at the screen and then talk this is where you should uh, minimize your reading of the slides okay you must always be facing the audience and occasionally you may just move Uh, towards the uh, slide and then read the point but you should be facing the audience most of the time so this is an important point in making impact so posture touch and body movements that is nods and gestures these are other important aspects facial expression if a person uh, has a very serious face or keeps a very serious face immediately loses impact on the audience gaze and eye contact then appearance of course the dressing and so on para language sometimes the speakers have the habit of using things such as okay all right etc mm, and so on very often very frequently why does this happen this is because uh, these kind of uh, sounds are used as stepping stone for a different idea or a different sentence okay it is like if you are jumping around you will step and then jump so these are uh, the steps now particularly when you have difficulty moving from one idea to other this kind of uh, things such as okay all right and so on will increase in number okay and they will then affect the communication 
In fact, I clearly remember um, we had a teacher in our uh, student days who had the habit of uh, frequently asking, am I making myself clear? And particularly when he would discuss difficult concepts, this particular sentence, am I making myself clear, would you know, come out almost every alternate sentence. Right? You say one sentence and then you say, am I making myself clear? And then you utter another sentence and then am I making myself clear? So, these kind of habits, they also reduce the impact on the audience. So, we must be careful about using these things. And then visual aids. <coughs> 